Hey, what's up, party people? In this video, I'm going to be specifically talking about variables in JavaScript. A lot of this will carry over for other languages, though, but we're specifically talking for JavaScript. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be extremely helpful, and I would really appreciate that. All right, so variables are assigned a value temporarily. That's not to say that the value is going to change. Basically, temporarily means it's not permanent. So it's not going to change automatically, it's not going to magically disappear. Basically it means that we can change it or update it if necessary. Because variables are only designed to temporarily store value. That doesn't mean it has a time limit, that just means it can be changed if necessary or by accident in some cases which can cause some errors or different results than what is expected. So the variable has the name name. So that's kind of confusing. So I guess you could make it something like first name. But this example, this variable has the name name. So this is what we call the variable. The name's technical term is identifier. So this right here is known as the identifier. This variable name has a value of Caleb. So, variable identifiers must start with a letter, underscore, which is this right here, or a dollar sign. There's no spaces or punctuation within the variable. You can't use a reserved JavaScript word, which we'll be getting into that, and they're case sensitive. That means name is not the same as name with a capital N. If you, if you uh, initialize this variable with this name, and then you want to use it later with this name it's not going to work out right and you're not it's going to cause an error in JavaScript it's common for the coders to use what's known as camel case for the identifier names so if we look back here actually no I didn't use that example so this means we do not use spaces for our custom names which we already talked about we don't use underscores usually either although you can we start with a lowercase letter, and each word after that is capital. So if you look here, the first word has a lowercase letter, the second word has a capital letter, the third word has a capital letter. If we had more words than that, it'd be a really long variable name, but if you wanted to do that, then each letter would be capital. This is just a convention for JavaScript. This is not required to program in JavaScript. This is just what most people are going to do and if you want your JavaScript to make sense to other programmers, it would probably be helpful if you use camel case. These on the other hand, the ones I talked about earlier, these are required. We can't have spaces in our in our variable because that will cause an error in JavaScript. So if we start from the beginning, we declare declare that's a vocabulary word, a variable like this var and then we type in the variable identifier we declare the variable with the var reserved word or keyword a reserved word in javascript is a word that is already defined and cannot be used for identifiers such as var so basically this is a word that is recognized by javascript and basically when javascript runs into this it knows you are trying to declare a variable so it wouldn't make sense to use a reserved word for your variable name or your identifier. There's, there's uh, other reserved words, but that's just an example of one. You can find a list of all of them online. So if you notice, we did not give favorite food a value. All we did was def uh, declare it and give it an identifier. Well, we don't actually have to do this. The value of this variable, favorite food, is undefined. We can assign the variable later in our program. So basically, when we're working with JavaScript, oftentimes you're going to want to tell JavaScript, okay, I'm going to be working with these variables. And you will give them all of the, you'll give JavaScript all of the variables at the beginning of your script or function or whatever. And then later, you can assign values to that variable. So we assign a variable a value, 
when, when we assign a variable value, it's said to be initialized. This means the identifier now points to a specific value by being assigned that value. So now, if we, if we erased all of our code, we started with this. Var favorite food is equal to celery. The variable with the identifier favorite food is assigned the value celery. Once a variable is declared, it can be initialized right then or later on. So here, we type var to declare a variable. We give it an identifier, favorite food, camel case writing, so first letter lowercase, second letter uppercase. And then we can, right now, we can give it a value, favorite food is equal to pizza. And once again, this is just a comment, so you can ignore that. Or we can do it later within our program. But here you see we declared the variable and assigned it a value. So this is different than this up here. I'm going to delete this comment. It's distracting me. All right. So these are both different. Let's say these are two different scripts, so not on the same script. This one, you declare the variable favorite food, and then we assign a value to favorite food with the assignment operator. So that's the equal sign. Oops. Down here, we're declaring the variable, giving it an identifier, and assigning it a value. As you can see, this is basically the same thing as this, only it's condensed down to one step, and it's declared and initialized all on one line. So for this, we could separate this, and we could basically define the value of the variable later. This one, it's automatically defined. I want you to realize though, if we're going to initialize the variable by giving it a value, we do not say var again. We only use that when we give JavaScript the variable we're going to use. So we declare the variable. So here we say var, we're going to declare a variable favorite food. So if we did, if this was all one script like this, this wouldn't be right because you can see we declare a variable named favorite food. We assign it the value pizza. Let's say I wanted to change the value. And then we declare it again. Well, if you look up here, it's already declared. So this isn't, this is not good for our JavaScript script. So if we wanted to reassign the value, all we would do is put that we would not put var again. But if you want to declare them both at the same, declare it and initialize it at the same time, that is how you would do it. So that was a lot, hopefully that made sense. So there's a little bit, I haven't really talked about scope yet and I'm not going to get into it very much, but basically you can, you can create a variable without using the keyword var and you can just automatically assign it a value. This will create a global-like variable, which basically just means it's accessible anywhere within your script, typically. So basically, I'm not going to explain this too much right now because it would make this video too long, and I need an entire video to explain that concept. But basically, just know you may see variables that are not defined. And this is different than de declaring it like this. So they're not exactly the same. That's something you need to know. All right, so on to the next slide. It's very important to understand that variables do not have types, the values do. So when I'm talking about types, basically there's different types or data types in JavaScript, such as string, number, boolean, or anything like that. So the variables do not have types. So here we have a, an identifier of a variable, favorite food. So now we have a variable named favorite food, and it has the value pizza. This is not a variable of type string. It's just a variable. This is a variable with a value of type string. So that's very important in JavaScript. The variables do not have values. I mean, sorry, the variables do not have types. The values have types. This goes along with knowing that JavaScript is a loosely typed language, but 
there's more to that than just this. So that's basically all I'm going to be talking about right here. But all you need to know is that the value has a type such as string or number and it doesn't matter if we we don't have to tell JavaScript that oh this variable is a string oh this variable is a number all we have to do is assign it a valuable a variable and oh, sorry all we have to do is assign it a value and JavaScript will do the rest for us so it's a weakly typed language this means variables are not defined as a certain type so variable favorite food is assign the value pizza this is a string value you see favorite food is now reassigned the value 5 without quotation marks there's no quotation marks on it it's just 5 this is basically reassigning a number as the value so now this is a number data type in a strict language this would cause an error because we would be changing a string variable to a number variable so in a strict language JavaScript is not a strict language it's a loosely or a weakly typed language it is not a strict language so this would cause an error in strict languages the variables have types in a weakly type language the values have types so this is just to say that we don't have to tell JavaScript what type of value we're assigning it and if you're new to programming that's really not that big of a deal and you you're probably like why are you explaining this 50 times well if you're coming from a different language that's a strict language it's it's probably confusing how JavaScript works with the variables. Well, all you need to know is that the values have a type, not the variable itself. So favorite food can be a variable that stores a number or a string or an object or a function or anything like that. Oops. Okay, because JavaScript is a weakly type language, that means the variable favorite food does not have a permanent type but can be assigned any type of value so once again <laughs> variables do not have types the values assigned to them do so favorite food is the variable the name of the variable the identifier pizza is the value of type string this is not a variable of type string that's just something you need to drill in your brain. Now a data type is the type of data assigned to a variable. For example, string, number, array, boolean, etc, anything like that. Now we also have objects and array, like we'll get into that in, in a future video, but anyways, there are two groups of data types with a total of three different classifications and we will be discussing this and the next lesson. So hopefully that was helpful and I can s I'll see you oh yeah here's a review here's all of our vocabulary we learned. A variable temporarily stores a value. Identifier is the name of the variable. Sign operator is how we assign it a value. A value is what the variable temporarily holds. Camel case is a convention used by JavaScript programmers where we leave the first letter uncapitalized and then the second word with no spaces capitalized reserved words are words known by javascript already such as var and so forth to declare declaring a variable is to say that it exists and it will be used in our program initializing a variable is giving that declared variable a value a weakly type language is something that does not give variables data types it gives the values data types and a data type is just any type of value such as a string a number boolean or a null or anything like that and that's what we'll be getting into in our next video so this video is kinda long sorry for dragging on about the same thing but hopefully that was helpful and helped clear some specifics up with JavaScript and I will see you in the next video be sure to subscribe and I'll see you then